Yo, 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 what is up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about BPD and favorite person. Now, if you like these videos, feel free to uh, hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 6K, which is absolutely fantastic. Feel free to drop me a comment down below uh, asking me about the next video, what you would like to see. And feel free to smash that like button. BPD and favorite person. What is a favorite person with BPD? I mean, obviously everybody has a favorite person in their life, but what is it in correlation with BPD? So I've got it here. I'm on a website called medium.com. It's not the usual very well mind, but here we go. The infamous favorite person, the person that someone with borderline personality disorder filters their worldview around. The source of comfort, that everything. Take one glance across BPD forums and you will find countless posts devoted to the favourite person, also known as FP. Your favourite person could be anyone, a relative, a parent, best friend, lover, it could even be someone that you've just met. The difference between having a best friend and a favourite person, especially for someone with borderline personality disorder, is the intensity and obsessive thoughts that surround that favourite person. Now take a quick break, I've got a tattoo on my chest, don't know if you could see that, but it says, in the kingdom of passion, the ruler is obsession. Take note. Now, a relationship with a favorite person can be healthy. But first, let's go through the most toxic relationships with a favorite person. Unfortunately, us living with BPD have a tendency to push away the person that we see as our favorite person, especially because we feel such an intense fear of abandonment. Now, this, lines up perfectly with how I am as a person. So in my experience of favorite person, I would say currently my favorite person at the moment is my girlfriend, and I think she's very aware of that. Now the biggest problem with favorite person is this big switch. It's almost like splitting in a sense, where you idealize this person, you, don't, you can't take them down from their throne. You know, you think they are the best person in the world. So when they do anything to counteract that, if they do something to upset you, if they dishearten you in any way, it can very quickly switch completely on its head. And I can say from my own personal experiences, I have had feelings of this, and it almost feels not uncontrollable, but very overwhelming and consuming. When these things happen, you feel like you have to act on those emotions straight away, which I would highly advise against, because when the, the favorite person gets flipped on its head and it, you then start to, to detest them, that can, again, very quickly switch on its head again and they will become back to your favorite person. I would say, don't act on those feelings of, of fear of abandonment. Do your best to sit through them and, and think through them and be calm and, and, and cautious and, and careful because, what you actually don't want to do is end up pushing away your favorite person and then causing damages, especially if it's with a best friend, a partner, family member. It could be very, very, very um, tragic. So what is favorite person when you have borderline personality disorder? When you have borderline personality disorder, your favorite person is the person that you are emotionally dependent on. There is a constant fear that this person is going to leave your life and you devote the majority of your time and day to the needs of the person. There is a great comparison that when you have borderline personality disorder, you are like a puppy that doesn't want its owner to leave. <laughs> the favorite person is the owner that you are begging to stay. When they leave, even though you, are lo you logically know they are going to come back, you destroy everything and throw a tantrum. Then when the favorite person returns, you act like nothing happened. In an extreme and often toxic case of being with a favorite person, this is a pretty classic example. Other examples of what it's like having a favorite person whilst having border, border personality disorder, feeling a surge of jealousy when the favorite person spends time with another person or compliments another person, changing your thoughts or opinions to match your favorite person's thoughts and opinions. Switching between idealizing the favorite person and devaluing the favorite person in a matter of seconds. Again, take note of that one. Mentally creating a fantastical world where you are connected to your favorite person, though it may not be realistic. Needing a constant supply of attention from the favorite person and going through what feels like withdrawal when your favorite person isn't there. Having a favorite person is intense, especially when you have borderline personality disorder. 
Now, lots to look at through this uh, paragraph that I've just read here. The, the, the bit that stands out the most to me initially, there is a constant fear that this person is going to leave your life and you devote the majority of your time and day to the needs of this person. That is so, so accurate. And you need to be very careful with that because actually what you do is because they are f your favourite person, you're trying to constantly feed into their happiness, which is feeding into your happiness, you will start putting them before yourself. And if this favourite person doesn't necessarily realise the needs of you, you can constantly be working after them and, and, well, not working for them, but you know what I mean, you know, chasing after them. And it can become very tiring and you can be putting their emotions before your own and you can become very drained and lethargic very quickly. So be careful about working to their every need. Be, be mindful to put yourself first so that you can approach them in a better, more happy, positive mood. In my, my own uh, experience of this favourite person, like I said, my favourite person is my girlfriend. I also have a condition called REM sleep disorder, which I don't know if you guys know about, but if you don't, I'll leave a link up here. But REM ba sleep disorder basically means that I dream a lot, and a lot of my dreams are nightmares, unfortunately. And now, in these nightmares, I would say about 75%, 85% of my dreams revolve around my favourite person and they revolve around my favourite person abandoning me. That would be them cheating on me, um, sleeping with my friends, uh, me uh, attacking them and then they leave, or them breaking up with me and not getting back with me and me absolutely begging and they're just having none of it. And those are the sort of dreams that I have, which is interesting because, you know, dreams are made from subconscious thoughts so in my head my favorite person I have all these fears constantly of being abandoned and it's reading through my dreams if you guys have the same uh, or if you've had any similar experiences please feel free to drop a comment down below um, and let me know because I, I really do feel like I'm on my own on this one let's go through the list that that they have, have put out so feeling a surge of jealousy when the favorite person spends time with another person or compliments another person again if you're in a relationship this could be very toxic and it can get very toxic very quickly. Jealousy is such a, a strong feeling and especially with BPD it's just heightened by tenfold. What I would do for myself in those cases is normally I would be in a situation and say for example a compliment is given somewhere else then all of a sudden my mind would start racing and I'd start putting together pieces of the puzzle which makes that this make sense. So basically I'd be like oh so she called him attractive so that means that she likes him that means that she wants to leave me so I feel jealousy so now I now dislike this person and actually I feel quite envious of him and I want to do everything that I can to get into the way of these two when actually that's a completely false concept she's only said that because she's his friend and it's it's false putting these pieces of the puzzle together but that isn't the puzzle you're putting together the wrong puzzle so again be very careful with that Take time to ease through these things. If you notice that you're doing these things, take a step back. Changing your thoughts or opinions to match your favourite person's thoughts or opinions. This is almost like a bigger, better version of social media and um, being the person that everybody wants you to be instead of being the person that you are yourself. You are yourself, and although they may be your favourite person, uh, your feelings and their feelings are very different. So keep them that way. Have your own opinions. Keep your own opinions. Your opinions are valid. Switching between idealising the favourite person and devaluing the favourite person in a matter of seconds. This is a horrible, horrible, horrible feeling. I cannot explain it, but it is so intense and vicious and it shocked me down to my core when the first time... That, that I really felt it. And again, it was to do with my girlfriend. She's my favourite person. She said one thing about another girl. And because of that, it almost felt like I switched off. Click of the fingers. I then had no feelings for her. And I felt in my heart of heart that I had to break up with her. And if I didn't, I felt like I was going to die, basically. My anxiety was through the roof. You know when you have a really uncomfortable situation and then you find out some news and then your stomach sinks and that feeling in your stomach that's so visceral and consumes the whole of your body. I had that for like five days and in the end I couldn't actually take it anymore and I, I, I went to the doctors and I said would you be able to help me with this because it's I can't 
deal with that all my life. I don't know how to get around this, and I don't know if I can necessarily help you with this, but from my experience, what it's best to do is to get to the end of it and get through that feeling before you make any decisions. Because with BPD, we feel like we have to react straight away to um, what's happening in front of us, but actually, no, we need to have time to think, to react, to build a logical way of of getting through this and then deliver your answer. Mentally creating a fantastical world where you're connected to your favourite person, though it may not be realistic. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much experience of this. But again, let me know down in the comments if you do have any experience of this. It would be lovely for me to sort of find some information out. Needing a constant supply of attention from the favourite person and going through what feels like withdrawal when your favourite person isn't there. Again, this is... It's interesting because sometimes I have this so prominently and other times I don't at all. I used to get this a lot more when I was younger, when I was incredibly dependent on just one person and that was it. That was who I could talk to, who I could uh, let them know how I felt. I would have one person that I'd always see and I was close with and that was it. And that was the person that I was in a relationship with. And it ended up getting really, really toxic because I needed this constant supply of attention and they wanted their own life. And at the time I didn't know that I had BPD. And, and I literally felt like uh, my insides were getting turned out because I had to be with this person all the time and they just didn't want to be with me and that brought across the fear of abandonment more and more and more. So what I would suggest to you guys is just try and find more people to talk to. You know, friends, family, uh, loved ones, even people on the internet, me. It can be anybody, but just find someone outside of your favourite person that you're able to talk to, that you're comfortable with. Because if things ever start going a little bit sour, then you always have someone that you're able to talk to and, and share those feelings with. So, here we go. Keeping your relationship with your favourite person healthy. You can definitely have a healthy relationship with your favourite person. Lots of Reddit posts and bloggers talk about how the favourite person always leaves and they never stay. With my earlier favourite persons, I noticed the abandoned dog effect that I mentioned earlier in this post. I would get upset and throw a tantrum if they weren't giving me enough tension and have a fit until they came back. This is manipulative and impulsive. Manipulative and impulsive. Remember that because it is. Please don't take offence, but it is manipulative and impulsive. If you throw a tantrum so they feel like they have to be there, that's you making them be there. They want to be there on their own. They're their own person. You're your own person. What you do, you cannot manipulate them into staying. Eventually, my favourite type person would get tired of my bullshit and leave. But there's always ways to have a healthy relationship with your favourite person. Number one, keep the relationship neutral. Your favourite person needs to be okay with knowing that they are your favourite person. You don't need to let them know all the details that it contains, but let them know that they're a big part of your life and you appreciate having them around. Let them know that sometimes you're insecure of your friendships or relationships with them and may need lots of reassurance and that everything is okay. I say to my girlfriend that I love her probably about 30 times a day and she'll always say it back because she knows that that reassures me that she's not going to leave and it makes me feel more content. Also, ask them if there are any needs that they haven't met. Do, you, uh, do they need some space? I know that it's terrifying to give your favourite person some space, but giving them some room to breathe is actually respecting their boundaries. Again, this comes back to what I'm saying. You cannot manipulate them. If they want to go, you let them be. And just so you know, take some time to breathe yourself. Let them breathe. And, and hopefully things can come together again and be better. A relationship with your favourite person needs to be built on mutual respect and care. And it needs to be care. With your favourite person, they need to be emotionally intelligent because you are emotionally intelligent. This is what BPD is. You're just good at reading emotions. So you need to find someone that corresponds with that and, you know, isn't, isn't brutal to you when you have these emotional times and doesn't disregard them and make you feel stupid because of them. You want to feel cared about and loved and, and reassured and helped. So yeah, make sure that you're you're trying to find the right people. And if you don't have the right people right now, that is completely fine. Because friends will always come around. You'll always find more people. There's always more people to be bet. Never make assumptions. Assumptions make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> 
Assumptions are the devil when it comes to having a relationship with a favourite person. The borderline brain likes to think in black and white, saying that this person hates me, or they're leaving me forever, or they're the worst. If your favourite person hasn't texted in a while, ask them, hey, is everything alright? I'm just worried because I haven't heard from you in a while. If your favourite person hasn't made time for you lately, respect that they're busy. Don't make the assumption that they hate you. Because again, this comes back to that thing that I was saying, you're piecing together a puzzle, and you're piecing together the wrong puzzle. Your brain is making things up that could be true, but just remember, they could be true. It doesn't mean they are true, they could be true. So do your best not to believe them. Wait until you found out the actual information and then react to that. Assuming the worst will bring out sides of you that will lash out and throw tantrums, to test your favourite person, you want to make sure that they don't leave. Don't give in to that emotional temptation. Do not emotionally blackmail. Do not emotionally manipulate. Don't do any of that. It's not needed. It's not necessary. If they are your favourite person and they love you as much as you love them, there's no need for that. You don't, you don't need to put them in a situation where they feel like they have to stay. Because if you put someone in that position enough times, they will leave. Because it's controlling. And nobody wants to be controlled. Everybody wants to live their own life and do their own stuff. When you feel like you have to constantly be coming back to this, this thing that requires so much of you. And, and you, not, you don't even necessarily feel like you're getting that much back. It's, it's going to go downhill. So, like I said, do your best not to give in to these emotional whims, this impulsivity that BPD is, is situated around. Just take things calm. Give time. Time is so valuable and so useful. You know, you could have an argument with someone and you could be absolutely popping off. And if you just take two hours to just breathe and maybe go for a run or, or read or, or do something, then, then I feel like it could really, really help you. There's lots more information up here. I will leave a link to this page. But I just want to finish with this. There is a bad side to the favourite person if you don't realise that you have a favourite person you don't realise that you're manipulating or being controlling in any way. So I guess the moral of this video is to be very, very, very aware that we are very strong in terms of our emotions. And our emotions do a lot of the time control us. But we must remember that emotions don't control us. We control them. So when it comes to these favourite person situations and things start going a little bit wrong, take your time. Breathe. Just be slow, be steady, be calm. They're your favourite person. You don't want to leave them. You don't want them to leave you. You don't want any reason for them to, to find a reason to hitch up and ship. So, please, for for you, I, I just need you to be smart about this. Mm -hmm. To be happy. I, I hope this video helped in, in some sort of sense. Favourite person is an interesting one because it's the best thing and it's the worst thing in the world but it's just part of us so embrace it, accept it and uh, let's move forward. I shall see you guys in the next video. Lots of love. I'm going to do some exercise bits and bobs but I'll also throw up some BPD stuff as well. Um, so yeah, lots of love. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make, through, make sure to subscribe, comment and like. I shall see you in a bit.